Welcome to Lightboard. Lightboard is simply a piece of glass that's edge lit with LED lights, so that when I write on it with a fluoro pen, the light really pops out. I use it to make educational videos for my students. Uh, I think it's a really good tool for the educational videos because the students get to see my face, uh, they get to see my hands, they can hear my voice, so it's really quite authentic. It's something that they're quite used to. The reason I, uh, I make videos for them is that they can access the new content prior to class. So I'll assign a, a video for them to watch for home learning prior to my class. And I think it's an ideal way of achieving the direct instruction for a couple of particularly good reasons. The first one is this button here on every computer, the pause button. Students are able to watch the video at the pace that they can cope with. And they pause it, take some notes, play a bit more. If they're not sure about the concept, well, they can just rewind it and hear it again. And they can take as long as they need to get their notes down and understand the concept. Something that clearly they can't do in class because a teacher is teaching at one pace for the whole class. So it's a marvellous differentiation tool. There's one more thing I encourage students to do, and that is watch it again. So they either watch it again straight after, or they might watch it again in class the next day. If they're starting to apply and deepen their knowledge, but they're not sure of a concept, well I'll encourage them to put their headphones in and watch the video again. Also closer to the exam, they'll watch the video again, again at their own pace. So it's a way of allowing the students to access the new content at a pace that's quite appropriate for them. Now, Robert Mazzano has done some really interesting work looking at where uh, classroom teachers use the time in their class. And he found that 58% of class time was spent on accessing new content, engaging in new content. And he said that a large part of that is the classic direct instruction style lecture. And he, he obviously, or he, he very much recognised that students need content. There's absolutely no doubt about that. They need content to be able to deepen that knowledge and apply it. But 58% of the time, most classes are spending on interacting with new content. And he said that 36% of class time is spent deepening knowledge. Deepening knowledge, deepening knowledge by applying it, applying that knowledge. And again, this is a very, very important part of, uh, of you know, any subject, clearly. But the, the reason he put together this, this uh, research is because he was suggesting that only 6% of time is, uh, is spent on cognitively complex tasks. Cognitively complex tasks. These are things like working at the top of the hierarchy of, of, of Bloom's taxonomy. It's, been, it's the creating, it's the analysing, it's developing transferable skills. What are we preparing students for is a, a real world, a workplace and a university where they need to be able to analyse and communicate and create and de design hypotheses and test and critically analyse. So it doesn't really matter what the vehicle is that we're using to, for them to apply to develop those skills, but that ultimately is what we need to be doing. So we need to be spending a large part of our classroom time developing the skills that we want our students to develop. So I'm questioning whether 58% of time in class is the best use of our time, um, students accessing new content. I would suggest that uh, what I can do in my class is get students to access the content at home so we can very much reduce this amount of time, such that we can spend more time deepening, understanding, and then of course also free up a lot more time to be developing or working on com cognitively complex tasks and developing those transferable skills. So this deepening, what would often happen in my previous life was that I'd spend a lot of the lesson uh, doing the direct instruction and the teaching, and then you know, you'd assign tasks for students to do for homework, 
that are really about the applying and the deepening. The trouble is, I'm not there to help them at home, and that's where I can really value at. Look, there's not one thing that I can teach my students in terms of new content that they can't access on, on YouTube. So where can I value at as a teacher is I can be doing one-on-one -on -one coaching and instruction to allow the students to be able to apply and deepen their knowledge. So if I'm not at the front of the class teaching, I've got 28 students in my class all working at different paces, uh, doing the tasks that they are ready to do, and I'm available to walk around and help each and every individual student on the problems that they're having problems with in class every single lesson. So my input to each student is much, much more specific and much more differentiated. The fact that the students have access to the, the videos and the content in class via their Ed Studio, it means that we can have a student who, um, uh, like a high-flying student, who is able just to keep on going. Once they've mastered a concept, they can go on to the next lesson and the one after. We have some students who haven't mastered the content yet, but they might be still working on the lesson behind. Um, we might have students that have missed a day or a couple of days, uh, a couple of lessons, so they're able to pick up uh, without having missed anything because they have access to the content through the videos. So it's absolutely perfect. Um, a, a wonderful differentiation tool, a wonderful way of freeing up this perfect um, class time for me to be working one on one with my students and also stretching them and developing them in ways that they need to prepare them for life outside of school. So that's the light board.